Hello everyone, uh, we're back for another video. Um, I got a new camera and uh, laptop and stuff, so uh, the pictures might be better. Uh, you can see my true beauty. <laughs> anyway, uh, today we're going to do uh, our video on promissory notes. How can we use promissory notes? Well, first let's give you a little background as to how you're already using promissory notes. Have you bought a car? Have you bought a house? Well, if you have, you've already used promissory notes. Now the house, uh, they might call it a mortgage, they might call it a deed of trust, or whatever, but it actually is a promissory note. Now what happens when you sign that promissory note is that you've created the cash, okay? You are the creditor, you're not, you're not the, um, the debtor, because you actually, by signing that, have created the cash for your own loan. Isn't that funny? So now the bank takes it and they take your promissory note, they go to the um, Federal Reserve, they get cash for that same uh, promissory note that you signed for a car or for a house, whatever. And then they take and they sell your promissory note on the uh, securities uh, exchange. So that happens very soon after you get it. Now, when they're doing this, the whole thing is a fraud to start with because you were not fully um, informed of all the stuff that they're going to do with your promissory note. You had no idea that when you signed it, you actually created the money. You're the only one that can create money. The government can't do it. The banks can't do it. Only you can do it. So, how else can we use a promissory note besides buying a car and buying a house? Well, when you do these things, you sign a contract that says that you're going to pay back so much a month. Of course, they didn't tell you that you were loaning them the money that they could lend you. It, it, it gets confusing. But now you have a car or a house or whatever, uh, credit cards, whatever, that you already created the funds for, and now they're billing you for them. So how can we get rid of that? Can we do A for B? Yes, you can do accepted for value, and you don't have to be a secure party creditor to do it. Um, but when you do that, you are involving the IRS and the Treasury, and these people are going to do everything in their power to make it so that your A for B doesn't work. They're not there to teach you how to do it correctly. They're there to discourage you from doing it in the first place. And that's why when you do an A for B, you're going to get a letter from the IRS that says that you're doing frivolous paperwork. And um, if you don't stop, they're going to charge you a $5,000 fine. Okay? Now, if you know what you're doing, you can get around all that bullshit. But if you don't, then you're going to end up maybe in trouble. And only because you're not capable of handling your, uh, your creditor's business at the point where you are now. That's one of the problems that most people have is that they see a little thing online, like on YouTube, and then they say, oh, great, I'm going to do that but they haven't done any research. They, ha they have no idea what they're really doing. They're 
they're just doing it. And they do it the way some guy says to do it. And that's the end of it. But they don't research the truth behind the whole thing. And what I'm telling you is they work because they worked for me. But I knew what I was doing. So when I got those letters, I knew how to handle them. And I made them go away. But you may not be at the point where you can do that. So a simpler method is to use a promissory note. The banks know what they are. They already know how to turn them into cash. So why not give them a promissory note? Now, on my website, there are DVDs that have that contain this kind of information on it to teach you how to do these things. And so that you can gain some knowledge, for 18 lousy dollars, you get three DVDs, data DVDs, not movies, data DVDs that contain everything you need to know to become a secure party creditor and also to do these kind of processes. All the documents you'll need, there's books on there. Well, you know, I don't want this to sound like an ad, but unfortunately, I can't, I don't have the time to be able to teach all of you the things you need to know. Even though I do talk to a lot of you on Skype and help you out with your documents and things like that, I am becoming a little bit bogged down. And that's why um, I have put those DVDs together so that it's all stuff that you can get on the internet free, you know, by looking, looking it up. However, I've already done this for years, and I have all the stuff that you're going to need, and I have it all in one place, and I'm only charging you what it costs to make those DVDs. All the stuff that's on it, I'm not charging you for any of that. I'm only charging you for the DVD itself, the time it takes me to record them, this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, my, my oath to all of you is to help you as much as I can for free. And if I can't help you for free, if there's a reason why I can't, like if I have to invest my time in doing documents for you, that kind of stuff I have to charge a little bit of money for, like, you know, five or ten bucks or something like that. But other than that, my oath to you is to do everything for as little as possible. I don't have my website up here to make money. I don't have these videos up here to make money. These videos are here to try and get as many of you people out there woken up and understanding what's truly going on and how you can get yourself out of debt and out of trouble. So that's what I'm doing here. So uh, other websites I've seen that are charging for how to become a secure party creditor, they're chores. I, I want to cry when I see that. Okay, $65 for one, one guy, um, I believe it's um, Stop the Pirates. Yeah, that's the name of it. This guy's charging you $65 for not even one-tenth of what I'm giving you for 18 for three DVDs. It's ridiculous, and it makes me, out, I'm outraged. But, you know, anyway, let's get back to the promissory notes. Here's what you could do, should you choose to. You could get the promissory notes from me, and then you fill them out with all of your debtor information, like the name of the company, the da, 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 you know, with the addresses and you know telephone numbers, all, all that stuff. Put that on this promissory note. 
Then you submit the promissory note as payment for your house or whatever. Now, here's what will happen. You're going to send it to them. You're going to give them 10 days. And you're going to say, if there's any defects in these documents, you are to return them within 10 days. So that, and telling me what the defects are, and then I will fix the defects, and I will send them back to you. Answer you at all, or don't respond, that they have accepted this promissory note as payment in full, and they are to send you, um, you know, reconvey your property to you, or take the lien off of your car, and show the credit card company, uh, credit uh, reporting companies that you have paid off your balance in full with good standing, and it give you an excellent credit rating. Now, some of them are going to. They're going to fight you tooth and nail. I mean, let's face it. They're not going to just go, um, oh, look, Joe, this guy sent me a promissory note. No, oh, okay, wipe out his debt. No, we got caught. No, that's not what they're going to do. They're going to keep on sending you bills. Now, if you take and make a payment on your bill, well, there you go. You're recontracted for the whole debt just by making a payment. So this is one of those things you've got to stick to your guns. And, you know, if they say that they're going to repossess your car, this, that, and the other thing, well, now you send them tort letters and tell them, you know, hey, you do that, and I'm going to have you in court with a jury trial, and we're going to find out what the all this stuff you're doing, all the fraud, because you're going to file a criminal, I mean, a, a, a civil lawsuit against them, in which you get to have discovery, you get to, and when I say discovery, that means you can compel them to bring forth all of their ledgers. They're not going to put their ledgers in court with you or with anybody else and let that jury see what they're up to. No, they're not going to do that. So the chances are very good that they're just going to, if you if you force them and show them that you're for real, they will more than likely just do as you wish. Because they actually can take that promissory note and go turn it into cash and pay off your debt. And that's how you use promissory notes. So, you know, but the whole thing here is you got to understand that none of this stuff is going to be as easy as it all sounds. You're going to run into problems, and you have to know how to handle those problems. Excuse me. And for that reason, you need all the training stuff that's on the DVDs that I have for, for you to have at your disposal. Then, once you've done the research by reading and listening to the audio files and all the stuff that's on there. Now when you come to me and ask me a question on Skype, you're going to be asking me for college type information. In other words, most times when people call me now, they're at the kindergarten level. And they're trying to do things that are at the college level. Like birth certificate bonds and stuff like that. Folks, that stuff is for when you really know what you're doing, okay? It's not to start out at the beginning. No, very dangerous. You're going to get yourself in trouble. So start off with baby steps. The first thing you want to do is get your copyright done and your traffic stop document done. And all you have to do is email me at my email address and I will send you those two documents for free. After you get them done, filled out, now you get them notarized, and then you send them back to me in my email. You pay seven bucks, and I put them on the website in the public record where 
anybody all over the whole country can come and look at your documents. And that's what makes them public record. The only things that have to be done at the county level would be maybe a UCC-1 financial statement or um, anything to do with real estate. Other than that, you can put it in, in the public record on my website and save yourself some money. Now my website is National Public Record Registry dot info and you'll find these videos and other videos up there for training and so forth and so on so give that a shot uh, be put in so and have a bye